Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to my quarterly stats video. Now I do not normally film these. Normally I include a few small stats in my monthly resets but I figured I would try this format this month and see how we go and if you like it then I can do this every quarter. So for those of you who are unfamiliar I keep a reading stats journal. I also have a reading spreadsheet which is very very comprehensive and I'll leave all of those things linked down below if you want to see how they're all set up. But essentially I track about 15 different things in my reading stats journal and I do that every month. The other thing that I thought I could use this video for is for a check-in with my reading challenges for the year. I have one major one which is the TBR bingo board from hell. That is also providing some incentive and I'm using my reading stats and my participation and success in that challenge to acquire books so I get a little bit of a book fund at the end of every month and then I get to buy books. And while I never feel guilty about purchasing books because I actually go through books very quickly as if you follow my channel you know I read a lot and so I don't necessarily feel bad about that but it does help me to think about well what do I actually want to bring into my collection? What are things that I'm excited about reading? Particularly if it's a case of I'm not going into a bookstore, I'm actually just putting these things onto a wish list and thinking about, you know, okay, well, if I have some money at the end of the month, what would I like to bring in? So we'll talk about the books that I acquired for the end of March. So if you're into stats, this is the video for you. If you're not, feel free to click away. That's totally fine. And I should also say it's not a way of boasting or anything like that because the other change up that I've made this year is that I'm including my picture books and kids reads in my regular reading stats, which I've not done before. And that is going to have a tendency to blow out my reading stats because they are shorter texts, but they are also reading. And I think they're an incredibly valid, very, really important part of reading, particularly in my life and, and the work that I do. So yes, when you hear some of these numbers, just also keep in mind that there are kids books a lot of kids books included in the stats. Okie dokie, so we're going to start with the March stats, then we'll do the quarterly stats, and then I'll go into the reading challenges. So in March I read a total of 65 books and a total of 13,059 pages. Of those books I had five rereads and they were my only five and six star books of the month. I read 37 physical books, 18 ebooks, nine audiobooks or immersive reads, so where I was listening and reading a book either as an ebook or a physical book at the same time. In terms of readership categories I had 13 kids titles. So usually that means picture books but sometimes it also means junior fiction titles. Seven middle fiction books, six young adult books and 38 adult titles. In terms of representation in books I read 27 books that featured queer representation, 15 books that featured chronic illness or disability representation, 12 books by BIPOC authors, two books by Australian or Torres Strait Islander authors which honestly I would like to bring that number up. That was not enough books for me last month and 18 of the total books that I read last month were by Australian authors. So that's my March stats. So if I go through all of those stats again but for the first three months of the year from January to the end of March. So far this year I have DNF'd 21 books. The reason I want to put DNF's at the start is that none of the rest of the stats include anything about those books in them. So the DNF's stand on their own, there's 21 of them and I will probably do like a quarterly DNF check-in or maybe I might uh quarterly or half yearly. You guys can let me know what you want to see. I have since DNF'd more books since then. <laughs> so that, that number has changed. In terms of total number of books read in the first quarter I have read 214 books so far this year. That comes to 44,209 pages. I have reread 20 books so far this year. I have read 115 physical books, so physical tangible books that I can pick up and hold. 76 ebooks including ebooks that I already own but also ebooks that I have borrowed out on Kindle Unlimited. I have listened to 25 audiobooks or immersive read 25 audiobooks throughout this year which is a huge improvement. I think that's more audiobooks than I read in the entirety of last year. That comes down entirely to the fact that I now have access to Libby and I am able to sort of go through more of those books. I'm also listening to more graphic audios which are my preferred type of audiobook listening format and I do have a few graphic audios that tend to go on repeat when I just want background noise because they're texts that I love and I just want to reread them but that number is significantly increasing. I have read 57 kids books, 14 middle fiction or middle grade titles, 10 young adult titles which leaves 131 adult titles that I've read so far this year. When we go back over the representation stats I have read 70 queer titles, 54 books by BIPOC authors, 8 books by Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander authors. Again I said like this is a stat I want to improve and I've got some books that I need to start reading and a total of 63 Australian authors. The thing that you might notice that's missing in this in the quarterly stats was the chronic illness and disability representation. That's because before this month I was not tracking it 
accurately. So next quarter I should have the next quarter's stats, but I think it's sitting around 19, 20 books total for the year. My most read genre, which will surprise no one, is romance books, of which I have read 95 so far this year. And my most read subgenre is contemporary romance with 35 books read. The other thing that I'm tracking this year, and I'm really interested in this just sort of for my own thinking and thinking about my own spending, because like I said, I, I'm going to buy books. I'm not going to stop myself from buying books. But through the use of Kindle Unlimited and Libby, I am also saving money on purchasing things. So I'm now also keeping track of what I'm saving by using those services, just, you know, because I need to see things. I need to see numbers. So Kindle Unlimited is a subscription service every month. So every month I pay $14 to use the service. And so I want to make sure that I'm at least reading the value of that subscription and then some. So, so far this year, minus my subscription fees for three months, I have already saved $181.43. And I'm mostly using Libby through my local libraries for audiobooks. So I have saved $427.46 when you work out the cost of those audiobooks to purchase. That's pretty good. <laughs> like that's, that, those are good things to see and good numbers to have for me. All right, so then we come to my monthly check-in for my TBR bingo board from hell, which was created by Leanne from Literary Diversions. And I love this challenge. It's really helping to keep me accountable. There are some challenges that I can hit every month and there are some that will take me the majority of the year to hit. So there are some very achievable goals and there are also some long-term goals, which is a good balance for me because I do need the serotonin hit of achieving something while also having something to work for. So the first square on my bingo board is to read 12 audiobooks, which I've hit for the second time this year. So I've now hit 25 audiobooks. So I get a second star, which meant I got to add $20 to my book purchasing fund at the end of the month. And I'm also one book into the next round of completing this challenge. I also had the challenge of reading 50% of my pre-2024 TBR. So anything that was in my collection, my physical collection before the start of this year, I have to read 50% of that by the end of the year. This includes reads and DNFs. And I need to go down from 108 books to 54 books by the end of the year. I have currently read or DNF 23 books, which puts me at 21%, which is not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that statistic. Fun fact, when I was putting all the notes in together, I forgot to include the DNFs. I'm like, it's only at like 11%. Why is it only at 11%? It's because I forgot to include the DNFs. My next challenge is to have 24 rereads this year, which is not going to be a hardship considering how many rereads that I have. My one caveat for this challenge is that I am not including any time that I reread a book multiple times in the year because I do have a tendency to do that. So this is the first time I reread a book this year, it counts towards this challenge because otherwise we'll be here for a while. So far I have reread 20 titles. Then I have the challenge to read 12 middle fiction titles. I have now hit that. I'm now at 13 middle fiction titles for the year. So I got my first star, $20 into the book fund, and I am now working on my second star. I also have the challenge to read 80% of my TBR every month. And this is a really good incentive for me. One, not to set huge unattainable TBRs, but also to read through what I set because there's a reason why I'm, I wanna read them. I wanna prioritize those books. So I did meet that by the skin of my teeth at the end of last month. I think I had to read 12 books or read, sorry, read or DNF 12 of the books on the, top, on the list. And I think I came in at exactly 12. So that's why this month is a much shorter TBR. We want something achievable. So again, that was another star and money towards my book fund. I also have this square to finish or catch up on the 12 series that I said I would read by the end of the year. I've now completed three series, including one that was read at the end of last month. And I have since also completed two more series since then. They'll feature in my next stats. Anyway, I'm making progress. I'm making good progress and I'm happy about that. I also have a challenge to read nine nonfiction titles this year because I don't tend to gravitate towards nonfiction. I'm currently at seven of the nine. I'm really excited. I'm currently working on my eighth book as an audio and I'm finding that the audiobooks are really helping with my nonfiction reading. I also have a square which is kind of an open-ended square because I can kind of complete it as much as I want throughout the year but it just sort of depends on how I'm feeling and what I have available to me, and that is the Friends Choose My TBR Square. So I've already completed it once this year, that was in February. I'm currently working on my second one in April. And it's just kind of more of a, if it happens, it happens, great. And then I get a star if I, if I complete it, but it's not something that I have to do and it's not something that I have to do every month. I like a low key challenge. And then the last square is to clear my net galley TBR. So I started the year with six, well, I started the year with five books, I added one, so I had six. I'm currently down to two books. So one is going to be read this month and then I will hopefully read the sixth one. And then once that's clear, I might be allowed to borrow Net Galley Arcs. 
but I'm wondering whether I just put that on hold for a little while because I've got plenty of other things to choose from. Like I don't need to have them. We shall see. Okay, so with the stars that I achieved in this month's bingo board, plus the 50 cents that I get for every book that I read every month, I ended up with something like, I can't even remember how much it was. I think it was like $96 or something like that to spend on books. Buy books I did. Now two of these books are books that I already have read. I already own multiple copies of one of these books, but the reason that I purchased them is because I own copies that are indie published, and also overseas copies, but I don't own the Australian Penguin editions. And I figured I better start collecting them because eventually I'm not going to be able to buy the matching sets of all the books that I have because it's just not going to be possible. It is the Jacksonville Rays series I've got Pucking Around and Pucking Wild. The Bricks. We, we just refer to them as The Bricks by Emily Rath. Anyway, as I said, I have Pucking Around in the original indie paperback, plus I have the special edition that she had for book signings last year. Thank you, Izzy. She got that for me. And I also have the original indie Pucking Wild that Izzy has and will send to me at some point. Given that she's been picked up by traditional publishing both overseas and here and I figured I just need to get the Australian UK copies so that I will eventually have a matching set of some kind. I say that but Pucking Sweet is probably going to have a totally different cover. That's fine. I'm, I'm attempting to do this and they were not all that expensive now that they're traditionally published. So then the three other books that I picked up, two of them are Australian authors, one of which is an Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander author, and then I have a sci-fi. The first one is a middle fiction. This is Footprints on the Moon by Lorraine Marwood. This is a novel in verse and it is set during 1969 and I'm really intrigued by this because I've read Lorraine Marwood before and I really really enjoyed her writing and when I heard that this one was a verse novel and I hadn't heard of it before I figured it would be a good one to pick up. I might save it for when we do the next round of the Australian readathon but that one I just I had in my list and I thought I might as well get it while I'm purchasing things because I have a I'm, I'm planning on reading it I've got a plan for it. Same thing with Always Will Be by Michaela Saunders. This is a collection of her short fiction so I can't remember how many books how many stories there are in here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 short works by Michaela Saunders in here. I have read Michaela Saunders in another collection, which is why this one was on my radar. These are stories about what the world might look like if First Nations sovereignty was asserted. So I'm very excited to get to this at some point. And then the last book that I picked up is partly cover by, partly I'm, I'm kind of hoping that this gives me the same feels as The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Beckett Chambers. It is Floating Hotel by Grace Curtis. I can't remember who I heard talking about this, but I remember adding it straight to my wish list and just going, if I get a chance, I want to read it. I'm up trying to up my other genre reading this year, trying to get back into reading some more sci-fi and I'm really hoping that The Floating Hotel is just gonna give me warm, cozy sci-fi feels. I could be totally wrong, but that's what I'm hoping for. So those are my reading stats for the first quarter of the year. I uh, hope people found that interesting. I know it's a lot of books, but as I said, I read a lot of kids and middle fiction, which is a lot faster and quicker to read, generally speaking. So I do get through kind of multiple things in one day. I'm really happy with how things are going this year. I'm really interested in seeing how including particularly the picture books and other kids titles impacts on my reading stats throughout the year. Obviously it's already had a huge significant impact on numbers but yeah I'm I'm enjoying it and I'm also enjoying having a little bit of freedom at the end of each month to sort of go through and look at things that I want to add to my collection or things that I've heard about that I would like to try and then that sort of gives me that sense of okay well I might have brought in three new to me books, but I've also read a significant number of books this month. So it kind of balances out. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about my stats or my trackers or anything like that, like I said, I'll leave lots of videos linked down below where you can find out more information or you can just ask me, feel free to. If you want to let me know that you're here, but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a book stack emoji down below. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you're on the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.